So now that we've gone over what a pilot is, we're going to talk about how to plan a pilot. So there are five steps for planning a pilot. First, define what the problem is. Second, define the solution. An important part here is to list your assumptions about that solution. Three, list your constraints, resources, and activities. So those are things that would limit you um, or things that you can't change or work around, the resources that you have access to, and the activities that you would need to do to complete um, the project. Four, and this is optional, is to create a monitoring plan. Is there something you're going to look is there something that you'll look at on a weekly, daily, or monthly basis to make sure that things are going OK? Um, I think in the Inspire New Readers pilot projects, a monitoring plan probably isn't that important because it's a short project. Um, and then five, this is an important part, is to create an evaluation plan. So I'm going to go through each of these steps in a little more detail. So number one, define the problem. The problem should be small. So what is small enough? What you're looking for is something that can be done with the resources that you have available. Now, while we are providing grants, or grants are available for people to um, print things, to make visits to places, to hire video editors or graphic designers, um, the limit of the project should be 2000 US dollars. And if possible, less than that. You wanna start fairly small. Um, an example from an event would be, an event with less than 20 participants, um, only one partner, if any partners at all, um, and less than three events. So not planning a large series of things, but just one or two things to see how things go. One or two events to see how things go, sorry. So at the end of your pilot, you should have a very clear sense of success or failure in addressing that problem. So that means when you're done with it, you know, well, did this actually work and accomplish what I hoped it would, or did it do something else? Um, so when we say success or failure, uh, it can mean a lot of things, but you know if, if this is something that makes sense to continue. So here, is an example of how you would make a problem smaller. So the initial problem is there aren't enough biographies about women scientists on Wikipedia. So in our effort to make it smaller, we're making it more specific. So there aren't enough biographies about African-American women engineers on English Wikipedia or African-American women engineers within the field of electrical engineering on English Wikipedia. And now that's African-American women engineers and electrical engineering born after 1950. So by making this problem more and more specific, you're targeting a very a smaller set of work to, to accomplish during your pilot project. Um, and I think that that's an important thing to do with any of um, the projects that you're considering piloting um, in the New Readers campaign. So I'm going to work with the folks here on our call today to make an idea or a project smaller. So we're going to start by picking one of the problems that we'd like to solve or one of the solutions that was offered in the Idea Lab campaign, or I'm sorry, the Inspire campaign. Um, one that I read a couple of weeks ago was a suggestion to put QR codes in textbooks so that when students were reading in their textbooks, they would see QR codes that would link to Wikipedia. So I think that this project would benefit from becoming smaller. Doing that kind of thing um, would require several years of work. It would require relationships with Board of Education. It would require um, having publishers change their textbooks. It would require uh, a lot of review of content there. Um, so Maria, Satip, Lauren, um, do you think each of you could think of one way to make that idea smaller, something that could be tried in a shorter period of time? Um, one of the ideas that I, um, yeah, that I come up with uh, after hearing this problem mm -hmm. is 
uh, is something that has been tried earlier um, in in some cities that that uh, uh, people have put QR codes in front of uh, different m monuments okay. in a specific city. Okay, so something that's smaller than that is instead of trying to get published in a textbook, put QR codes on city monuments um, so that people can learn more about those monuments. That seems like it would require less time and less work. Um, does anyone else have ideas? Um, so for example, if we're thinking of um, adding QR codes to um, workbooks uh, uh, in schools, uh, instead of targeting uh, the entire uh, school, we can start with one class. Um, okay. Yeah, within within one one year and test how how the QR codes bring more traffic to Wikipedia for example. That's an interesting idea. I was thinking, um, you know, textbooks are one way that students get material and they learn about their homework um, or get, get the information they need for homework. But um, when I was in school, we got worksheets, so printouts. Um, and I don't know how common that is in other places. Um, but if you were putting QR codes on worksheets, or on printed material that teachers are distributing, that would be a way to test whether or not students are going there and using that information. Um, but that's a great idea to try it in just one classroom. Does anyone else have ideas? I will think of one myself. So it seems like the goal of this is to get Wikipedia articles that relate to students' work in front of them so that they can learn more than what's there. Um, I wonder if printing out articles that are relevant to students would be helpful, um, or sending students links in an email to all of the, the articles that apply to their homework one week. Um, and then asking the teacher how that went the next week. Um, does anyone else have something? Um, I just uh, uh, wanted to add on that and, and, mm -hmm. and we should just uh, focus that on one institution and one classroom. Yeah. Uh, at a time. Mm -hmm. Great yeah. reminder. Yeah. yeah, so it sounds like together we suggested ideas like instead of printing QR codes in textbooks, which, which, which would take several years to do, and a lot of work and a lot of people participating, um, Satdeep suggested adding QR codes to monuments in a city and see, are people using those QR codes? Um, Maria suggested testing this out um, in one classroom at one school during one year to see, is there more traffic to Wikipedia articles? Um, and I suggested sending students links to Wikipedia articles or adding the QR codes to printed materials that the teacher gives them. So those are three ways that we have made, we have proposed to make this idea of QR codes and textbooks something smaller, something that we can test. Um, so I think, yeah, I hope that the folks get the idea of that. Um, I'm going to move on to the next phase. Yes, Sati calls us to remember the really big, gorgeous sandcastle that probably won a contest did start with a person making a single bucket sandcastle on the beach somewhere. So just because you're starting really small does not mean you won't go to big, important, really beautiful places. 